you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Are we together? When the Bible says all things are possible, it is true, but not under every condition. And I want to show you very quickly just two, just two of the secrets of the kingdom. In addition to what the Lord showed us yesterday, irrefutable principles that are backed up by God's own integrity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You have to understand that these principles are not opinions. Please understand. They are not opinions. It's not something where well, let's try and see if it works. It truly does work. Meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. And there is a guarantee that your profiting will appear unto all. May God bless you. Thank you, sirs. Thank you. Are we together? So let's look at two of them. Oh, dear. I'm wondering which one to omit and which one to talk about. <laughs> no. Praise the Lord. You see, our, this kingdom is a kingdom that operates by knowledge. Hosea lamented in chapter 4 and verse 6. He said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. It takes knowledge to be able to reign. The Bible says, Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1, Arise, shine, for your light is come and the glory of God is risen upon you. Are we together? I always like to quote it from Amplified. It says, Arise from the depression and prostration which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. Rise to a new life. For the glory of the Lord is upon you. The Bible says, darkness shall cover the earth, gross darkness the people, but upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise. Verse 3 says, Gentiles will come to your light and their kings to the brightness of your rising. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So let's examine the mysteries of the kingdom. Very quickly, we'll, look at, um, we'll just look at two of them. Oh dear. Number one, it's called the law of value. It's one of the mysteries of the kingdom. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16. Let's hurry up. Proverbs 18, 16. Proverbs 18, 16. The law of value. Very powerful scripture. It says, a man's gift makes room for him. Please look up. And brings him before great men. A man's gift makes room for him. Before then, there's no room for him. A man's gift makes room, creates space for him. Are we together? Will you be tired if I ask you guys to come again? Four of you, come quickly. Please come, come, sirs. Yes, come. All four of you, come. Let's celebrate them. I'm sorry, please permit me. Um, just, just stand close to me, all of you. Just stand facing the crowd. Everyone, look at this. So here's what the Bible says. Just compress yourself. There is no space for you anywhere. This is, call this the table of greatness. There's no space for you. That, that idea that there is a place for you is a psychological consolation. But in reality, there is no space anywhere. Here's what the Bible says. A man's gift will make room make room there was no space for you but it makes room it will push people left and right and create your own space the value value is defined as a measure of usefulness value is a measure of usefulness to be valuable means to be perceived to be useful as far as the context of a territory or a civilization is concerned. It is very, very important because most believers 
And, and Pastor Sir, I think um, you will agree with me that one of the challenges with the body of Christ is we have not paid attention to the secrets that make us dominate over the cosmos. Because of the presence of the Holy Spirit and the advantage that the spirit realm provides, sometimes we negate the power of principles like value. And we have this understanding that things would just find their way to fall in place. But we're dealing with men. This is the cosmos, the world of men. And the Bible tells us that when it has to do with dominion over the cosmos, to be wise as serpents, and gentle as doves. A serpent is not a good reptile, but it says borrow wisdom from the serpent when it has to do with dominion over the cosmos. The serpent is disadvantaged in many ways. No hands, no legs, it crawls, yet you fear it. You have hands, you have the feet, and yet you fear that thing that just crawls. There must be some level of wisdom there. Dominion. When a lion kills its prey, you will know because blood will spill. When a serpent eats its prey, you will not find where it was or where the prey is because it does not leave the stain of blood behind. It swallows it wholly, and the digestion happens there. A lion will eat and crack the bones and leave the remains. There are many lessons to learn from the serpent that can help us work in victory over the cosmos. But that's not where I'm going to. The Bible says the value, the gift of a man, your value is not just a measure of your skill. Please look up. Every time I talk about value, I break it into two. The first real value you have is your virtue, not your transactable skill. Your virtue is a measure of your closeness to the character of Christ. This is value. You know, many times when we talk about value, we think about our transactable skill, the intellectual prowess and all of this. These things are wonderful, but they are secondary. In the long run, your virtue is what gives you an edge as far as value is concerned. Are we together? Yes. You ask any blessed man, they will not tell you they are necessarily looking for a person of skill alone. But they, they would have been betrayed by many, many gifted rebels. They are looking for people who have virtue. Virtue is not cheap. And virtue is not for women. <laughs> virtue is a measure of your closeness to the character of Christ. Let me tell you this. When you contend to sustain the character of the Christ... You become Beulah and Hephzibah. It becomes difficult to ignore you. The world is look, what the world is looking for in men is what only Christ can give. The fruit of the Spirit. Your patience, joy, peace. This is what we seek for. You are valuable to the degree to which you walk in partnership with the word of God and the spirit of God to sustain the character traits that make you reflect Christ. Are we together? Now, you would think what I'm sharing is very cheap and very simple and very basic until you see what lack of the manifestation of the character of Christ can do to a man. Why do you lock your homes when you leave? Because there are people who don't have the fruit of the Spirit. And you are aware of them. Are we together? Yes. Yes, sir. You came to church and yet you locked your car. Why? Because you are aware that there is an environment that may not exactly reflect your values. What makes heaven heaven? Because there is a system that judges rebellion immediately. Remember, we're talking about the keys that reproduce heaven here on earth. There was war in heaven and Lucifer was judged immediately. Notice that God is so secured, he never gets up from the throne to walk around heaven to check for loyalty. There is a system put in place. He is unperturbed, seated on his throne, yet rebellion is judged from any angle of heaven. 
That means you can sustain that same intelligence and save yourself the stress of policing people to check for loyalty. There is an intelligence you can employ in your business, in your life, that from where you are, you can detect rebellion. Are we together? Let me give you an advice. Deal ruthlessly with rebellion. Rebellion is not an advantage under any condition. You have a company and people are rebellious, let them go. Don't feel insecure, let them go. Whatever comes from rebellion comes pregnant. It will happen again. Hmm. Are we together? Yes. So your virtue, the character of the Christ... By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Not when you speak in tongues. Not when you pray. Not when you sow seeds. When you have love. There is a dimension of love, agape, that is not given unto men. It's the spirit of God that will shed that love abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. So when you sustain these character traits, how about being trustworthy? Imagine what you will do when you find someone you can trust. Genuinely and truthfully. Hallelujah. Then when we deal with virtue, we now deal with your skill, your transactable skill. But I think one, especially for a generation of young people, we have placed emphasis on transactable skills. Once you are educated, you have a master's, you have a PhD, it doesn't matter what spirit, what demon, what devil, what, I mean, nobody cares. I am skilled and I deserve to be at the highest position in life. No. You will get to a realm where everybody there is skilled. What then becomes your edge? There is a realm you get to where your transactable skill no longer becomes the basis of your lifting. It is your closeness to the character of Christ. Even non-believers are looking for Christ in everybody. Are we together? Let me tell you sincerely. If by this conference you trust God for grace to rise to a position where there is an appreciable dimension of the character of Christ. He said, my little children of whom I travail. Paul is speaking, until Christ be formed in you. He was talking to people who were already born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. The formation of Christ. Ask any CEO here, he will tell you. The headache of every great man is not just skillful people. In fact, many times they become the trouble. The wisdom, the loyalty. Are we blessed? But I tell you this. You know you are valuable by who pursues you. If nobody is pursuing you, it's a report card that you are not valuable. All men seek for you. Listen, there are certain skills that when you have, only the rich will look for you. There are certain skills when you have, only the poor will look for you. There are certain skills when you have, only the educated will look for you. There are skills that when you have, only your tribesmen will look for you. But there are skills when you have, all men will look for you. All men will look for you. That was a testimony of Jesus. All men seek for thee. All men, all men, all nations, all territories seek for thee. Make up your mind that you will be valuable. The kingdom operates on a reward system. You know that. And it is, it is fraud to expect rewards when you are not valuable. This is true. We must contend to be valuable. Here is where our precious, superstitious Africa will continually be cheated. We have this understanding, you know, Africa, we're a wonderful place, uh, but we're also a very superstitious place. We believe that things can fabricate themselves. For years, we have been claiming Bill Gates' wealth. For years, we have been claiming the wealth of, um, what's his name again, Who all these great men. Until now, they are getting more blessed, whereas many people are getting frustrated because God is not a fool. He designed in this system that rewards follow value.
Many people look at preachers and say, why well, these people are just blessed for doing nothing. <laughs> Let me tell you why preachers are blessed once and for all, so that we'll just clear the air over this. <laughs> preachers are blessed because they are communicators of value. The value may be spiritual in context, but it is real value. Are we together? Number one, they connect people to faith, a relationship that is superior to any on the earth. Number two, they help to shape the mindset and the understanding of the people that makes for victory. That's real value. Number three, they are spiritual conduits that communicate the possibilities of God. A miracle, a sign, and a wonder cannot be bought in a bank, cannot be bought in a market. Whoever aligns with God to receive that grace and communicate the same is valuable. Are we together? Seest thou a man diligent in his business? The Bible gives you an assurance that you will stand before men, before kings, and you will not stand before mean men. Let me show you two scriptures very quickly and then we'll rush. I apologize, I would not take so much of the time. Uh, let's just work with what we have. Ready? Exodus chapter 4, please. Let's look at verse 2 and verse 17. Would you be a bit patient? Thank you. Exodus chapter 4. And the Lord said unto him, what is in your hand? And he said, what? Let's go to verse 17 for time's sake. It says, you shall take this rod in your hand and with it you will do signs. When you stand before Pharaoh, you are not allowed to speak too much. Let the rod keep doing the speaking. There must be something you carry that will continue speaking when your mouth is shut. Are we together? One of the principles of dominion is you must bet something out of you that immortalizes your impact. There must be a product or something that comes out of you that keeps speaking even when you are silent. Bill Gates is in your home. Zuckerberg is in your home. You drive him, he comes back. You bring him back by yourself. That's dominion. Are we together? You drive Coca-Cola and curse them and curse them and in three days they are back. They don't fight you when you drive them because they understand the addictive power of their influence over you. I hope you understand what I'm saying. And I hope you understand I'm not being sarcastic. You get the idea? Praise the Lord. Listen, say in the name of Jesus, I obtain grace to be valuable. I obtain grace to be exceptional. Lagos is a good land, but the increase only looks for men of value. When you are valuable, listen, you know you are valuable when no, no amount becomes too much to reward you. At that point, you are priceless. Look at this. If this handkerchief is, say, a thousand naira, please hold it. No matter how wealthy you are, you will not pay a million for this, ordinarily. Are we together? Why? Because you perceive that although it is valuable, it is not that valuable. Now, if you are this handkerchief, in my example, people can give you a thousand naira, but when you demand for a million naira, they think it's unfair. I told you yesterday, everybody is a giver. Truly. Can you rise to a level of value that makes no price becomes unfair, uh, that makes for no price to become unfair on you? That someone can look at you today and still give you a property worth millions and, and say, please, let it be a privilege for me to bless you because you are that valuable. I made up my mind as a person that in the name of the Lord, I would not just be a preacher, but I would be valuable. That I would never have encounter with anyone. And then you say, oh, it's nice to meet you. Go away. No. No. It's a vow and a covenant that I made with myself. 
So it calls for study. It calls to expand your understanding. As a preacher, you talk to all kinds of people. If you're a medical doctor, the limit of your profession is just around the hospital and all of this. But as a man of God, you're talking with diplomats, you're talking with business people, you're talking with politicians. You must sustain the intelligence that communicates God to their sphere. It is not an impartation. It is knowledge that is acquired. It's truth that is bought. This is what will make you valuable. And I tell you the truth, anybody, any preacher, anyone in ministry who is not ready to be valuable on this wise must be ready for empty pews. Your pastor is vast, intelligent, skilled. That's why you come here. That's why you love him. That's why no amount you sow into his life becomes a regret. You don't go back saying, I would have given, ah, was it a wise choice? You see, when you regret, it's not because you are not a giver. You compare what you gave versus. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, may we sustain the grace to be valuable. Listen, there are many of us, we need to fold many complimentary cards, respectfully speaking, shelve them and go back to do our homework. There's no need going around and saying, look, I'm a great musician. You've not seen anointing till you invite me. If you have to market yourself on that wise, it's already a sign that you must go back and say, God, you called me. This, this, you called me. Place something both on my mouth, my lips. It says my heart is indicting a good matter. Yeah, I speak of excellent things. Then it says my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Hallelujah. Every good thing runs away from me. Lord, there is a dimension of value I need to step into. Praise the Lord. I can cook. Who eats your food? You see, if kings... I, I hope you don't find this insulting. I'm just stretching us. Now, listen, let me tell you this. Please listen. Hallelujah. Are we together? Until kings look for you, you are not there. The real wealth and honor is in the palace, not outside. So you can start from Shushan like Hadassah, but don't end there. You can even come close to the gate like Mordecai, but don't remain there. Your real honor happens in the palace. You have a business and kings have not turned their attention. You are not valuable enough. Keep pressing. While they are clapping for you, let them do the clapping while you do the growing. You will grow to a point when you feed kings, you will eat from the treasury of kings. It is very easy to rise when we contend to be exceptional. It was Dr. Murdoch that said, your similarity creates your comfort, but it's your difference that creates your rewards. Birds of the same feather flop together, but when they are hungry, they flop together in unity when they move. But when they are hungry, every one of them, I mean, geography tells us they have skills. They have different skills to catch prey. When you become like everyone else, you become easily replaceable. Let me define what it means. You see, to be valuable means to be given an impression that you are not easily replaceable. It is true that no man is indispensable, but becomes so difficult to replace that even after complaining, they'll say, well, there's nothing we can do. We will still have to make do with you. Please make up your mind that I will be valuable. Make up your mind. I will be valuable. That the day I have an interaction with my destiny helper, I will not talk to him twice. Once is enough. Hallelujah. The gift of a man. Let's do it one more time. Makes room for him. This is Lagos. This is your real estate company. This is your business. This is ministry. There is no space for you. And it has nothing to do with sentiments. But when God anoints you and you walk on your skill, virtue, exceptional Christ-like virtue, backed up by intelligence that is beyond argument, you bring these twofold dimensions and life will shift and give you your space. 
It will not be an issue of tribalism. It will not be an issue of gender. There are not too many valuable people on earth. There are many human beings. But there are not too many valuable people on earth. Nobody likes me. You may be right, but why should they like you? Forget about the liking part. Why should they like you? It's an honest question you must ask. Why should, because it's fraud when if you follow me, how many of you, watch this, how many of you have climbed a bike or Uber or whatever, and then you, well, not Uber, they, they, they use the GPS system, but just a bike man, and he tells you he's taking you somewhere, he tells you he knows the place, and later on, he, he will pass the place and say, sorry, uh, you, are you new in Lagos? Well, you know how this thing is. I'm, I'm not, uh, where did you even say again? You see, the person was bold enough to start going, and look at the speed he was moving around, <laughs> And then you are just loitering around town. Your time is going. And then you ask him and then he will forcefully admit that I'm not exact. Let's help ourselves. Now, you don't follow such a person. <laughs> Hallelujah. One of the levels of leadership that they teach in business is leadership by results. That people not only follow you because you are skilled and all of that. People need to see real results. And let me tell you, don't downplay the place of results. Nobody will follow anybody who doesn't have results. They may love you. They may pray for you. But they will not follow you. Follow me and I will make you. Follow me. I dare you. Follow me and I will make you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Let's look at... Oh dear. The second kingdom secret that I want to teach quickly, if we stop here, that's, that's all right. Please do not forget this one. In fact, let's, can we pray in tongues for one minute before I start teaching this? Hallelujah. Second Samuel chapter 9. I call it the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Please write it down. We live in a world of men. Please understand. The earth, the heavens, even the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord. But the earth has he given to the sons of men. The cosmos is a domain that is controlled and managed by man. If you know God alone, you will do well, but you will not succeed in the cosmos. You need to know both God and man. Please listen very carefully. Hmm. Most believers say it doesn't matter. It matters. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter, but who likes you? matters one king loves a woman and she becomes queen the same king hates a woman and she ceases to be queen please do not say it does not matter the gatekeepers in this realm are men and if you do not understand the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers connecting every man from where you are to where you need to be is the ministry of a destiny helper let's hurry up Second Samuel chapter 9, please, from verse 1. Please look up. Let me do the reading. And David said, Is there any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? We're reading the first 11 verses too. And there was in the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. Three. And the king said, This and that and that and that. And then let's go to, okay, hold on. Please go to verse three again. He said, And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son, which is what? Incapacitated. 
Someone is about to be lifted who does not have the ability in himself. Four. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said, Behold, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, in Lodeba. And, the, and King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, from Lodeba. Now, when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold your servant. Be patient with the reading. David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely what? Show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake. And I will restore. This is, you see that now? I will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table. How long? When it happens only once, it's not favor. It's breakthrough. Favor must be consistent. Continually. Read on. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am. He would have said, you are speaking negatively. Get out of my palace. But when God plants a man's heart to be connected towards you, there is nothing the devil can do about it. Next verse. And the king called Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertained to Saul and to his house. Thou therefore, now look up please, and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him. Look at this kind of thing. You sent me, I obeyed you, and now you are saying the man you sent me to bring. I and my sons will till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the, first, the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Joshua Selman, thy master's son shall eat all way at my table. Now watch this. The Bible ends this with a very terrible information that this Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. So the king looks at a man with 15 sons, 20 servants, and says, leave all of them. Go to Lodeba. Go and look for a man crippled who has admitted he was a living dog. Bring him and he will eat at my table while you farm for him the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. In a moment, a man's life is changed because a man loved. See, the Bible says, and Jesus, Luke chapter 2, I think, and verse 52, and Jesus grew in wisdom, listen carefully, in stature and in favor with God and when you have favor with God, you will know him. You will have encounters, but you will be broke. You will fail. You will suffer. You need favor with men. It's true. Please write this down. Destiny helpers are people equipped, empowered, ordained, and assigned by God. To help you fulfill your destiny. They are not people who just come. They are ordained. They are assigned. They are empowered by God. To help you fulfill your destiny. And also to take you to the next level of your life. Let's hurry up. You can get the tapes. It is God that blesses. But you would have heard me say it again and again. That all blessings come from God. Through men to men. Nothing comes from God directly to men. It comes from God through men to men. Please say it one more time, everybody. From God through men to men. Your promotion from God through men to men. Your property from God through men to men. Your miracle from God through men to men. If God says yes and the middle man says no, the answer is no. I wish I had time. Let's do a little Bible study. The Bible tells us, I would always want to use this scripture. Did you know that David in the wilderness, already God had rejected Saul as king? We're Bible people. Is that true? 
And now David was in the wilderness having visions of himself as the next king. And between God and David was a man called Samuel. God said yes. Samuel said no. David remained in the wilderness. David's life was being delayed and almost wasted in the wilderness because a man disagreed with God. And you thought that God would just bypass him and say, I am God. David, I anoint you. God had to come and plead with Samuel and say, how long will you weep? Seeing that I have rejected Saul as king. God himself, not bypassing men. This is the world of men. Believers, please hear me. Our advantage is not just our spiritual connection, but our understanding that when God wants to lift you, he will connect you to destiny helpers. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.